Hi guys, Ben West Outdoorsman here with another video. Um, this one I've been wanting to do for a long time, and um, I uh, just got done with another hunting season, and I figured it'd be a good time to do it. Um, and it is about the best rifle bullet, quote unquote. Um, that's really a relative term because there isn't one rifle bullet that's best for everything. I mean, I have I have one or two, you know, that I pick that I could use for everything and stuff. But that's always a relative question to the game you're hunting, um, the range that you're hunting, um, the caliber you're using, all that. We'll go through that. But I wanted to give you pretty much like three grades of bullets, three choices that you can that you can make. Um, and then also we'll, we'll go through maybe some special considerations that uh, I've used personally and other stuff that I've seen used. Uh, but just between myself, I've used almost every rifle bullet available to kill deer. Um and other animals um, and between me and my brother and my dad and other people that I've been with I've had a lot of experience with every type of bullet in most types of calibers um, and uh, I just want to give you my feedback on what I think uh, some attributes that you should look for uh, I'll give you some specific choices that I make and why I make them and uh, just you know help to narrow it down because there's I mean, it's great today, I mean, if you can get ammunition, which a lot of times it's really, you know, short and you can't get it. But um, if you can get it and it's available to you, there's a lot of choices out there um, that manufacturers do make. And sometimes it can be, especially for a first-time hunter, um, or even for a seasoned hunter, um, you can maybe get in one problem, like getting way too much meat damage or something, and you're really trying to figure out why or what, you know, you can switch to uh, that'll work for you. And uh, hopefully this video will help you with that. Um, and first how I'm going to go through the, the bullets uh, selection is I'm going to go through what I call like a regular or a standard grade bullet. Then I'm going to go through like a mid-range uh, bullet, which is a step above your standard bullet, but it's not in like the super premium class. And then there's also like the real high grade uh, super premium bullets. Um, and uh, I'll go through what separates them and, uh, you know, what I think they're good for and who maybe what niches they would fill as far as um, you know who might want to select those bullets um, and first we'll start with the the regular grade bullets now this would include stuff like your Remington core locked uh, your Winchester power points um, and uh, you know your Hornaday um, your standard Hornaday boat tail spire point or flat points um, you know spear makes you know the regular bullet uh, you know pretty much every company standard uh, cup and core Copper jacketed lead core bullet is what I'm talking about. Your regular standard bullet. Um, if you want to go buy, you know, boxes, you have your, um, you know, your Federal Blue box or your Remington, you know, your regular Corlock Green and Yellow box or um, Winchester White box. Um, you know, so those are the type of bullets that I'm talking about as being standard bullets. And now, um, I, I right off the bat. I'm not, if you if you like a certain bullet and I don't mention it or I think that there's other bullets that are better, that doesn't mean that your bullet isn't fine and won't kill deer because you can kill a deer with anything. But um, I have used them all and there's a reason that I choose what I choose and that's just my opinion, so take it for what it's worth. Um, but as far as regular bullets go, I pretty much have one choice that I always go to and that is the Hornaday Boat Tail Spire Point. Um, I've used all of them. I used to reload extensively. I don't so much anymore because I don't have the time. But um, especially for you guys that shoot a lot, that you guys are that are reloaders. I mean, you probably already know this if you're a reloader, and you probably have your own favorite bolts or something. But maybe you're just getting into reloading, or you want to get into reloading in the future or whatever. Um, these bolts are the best bang for the buck as far as being cost effective. Um, you can buy you know, a box of a hundred of them, or you can buy them in bulk for way cheaper than you can buy any of the mid-grade or the high-grade bullets, and they'll still do the job. Um, now, there's a couple considerations with regular bullets. Um, for one, you, it's a cup and core bullet. Um, they're not bonded, so um, you, I would recommend going up in your bullet weight um, to compensate for that. Um, what I mean is, like, in, let's say, a 30 out 6 I would go... And you have to look at your velocity and the cartridge you're shooting. But I'd say in a 30 out 6, I wouldn't go lighter than 165. Um, a 180 grain, as long as you're not shooting over, you know, 150 yards, um, would be even a better choice. Um, and if you're looking at the 300 class, like 300 WSM, 300 Win Mag, 
or even your seven millimeter Remington Magnums and stuff like that. Uh, I would go up into the like the 180 grain as as the as the minimum, um, unless you're shooting super long range, like I'm talking over three four hundred yards. Um, but even then, I would stick with the 180s or above. Even I used to shoot 190 grains uh, Hornaday Boat Tail Spire points out of my 300 Win Mag and had great luck with them. Um, and there, but there's a couple reasons why I love these Hornadays. For one, they're cheap. For two, they're super accurate. I've, I've, I've never had a gun that shot them badly. Um, that can be kind of subjective because there can be some guns that just don't like certain bullets. But usually if you go up and down in your bullet weight or kind of fine-tune it in your powder charge, I've never had a, a rifle in my, me personally, that has not shot Hornaday boat tail spire points um, bad. And what I mean by boat tail spire point is um, a boat tail is on the end of the bullet. Um, here I can draw you a little bit of a graph if, for some of you that don't know. Um, you have spire point is basically saying that the bullet is pointed and um, you know FP or flat point is the the front of the bullet is just just that flat point and uh, your standard bullets a lot of times are flat base uh, and boat tail here's just a drawing oh, hold on I'll draw a regular one next to it so you get an idea for those of you that may not know these are crude drawings just keep bearing with me here but there we uh, on the top there that's a flat base bullet as you can see it's just a flat base and on the bottom is a uh, kind of a drawing of a boat tail bullet where the bullet tapers down at the end which creates less wind drag which um, gives it a higher ballistic coefficient which means it cuts through the wind better and it'll be less affected by wind drift and it'll lose less of its velocity um, and the spire point like I said is just a pointed bullet versus you know a bullet that's flat on the front which again cuts through the wind better and um, gives you higher energy down range and uh, that's why I, 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 would, I would go with the bolt tail spire point uh, every time uh, that's just me but that's that's what I use and I've had good luck with and like I said for those reasons it cuts through the air better less wind drift um, you'll be able to retain your velocity over longer distances and stuff better um, so that's you know what I'm talking about as far as boat tail and spire point and all that but uh, these bullets, um, they're really good quality made uh, bullets. You can look at like a Remington Corlock or like the Winchester PowerPoints and stuff, and they work. But a lot of times you look and there'll be like spots of lead on the outside or the tips will be mashed up. Um, you can tell they're not, you know, perfectly uniform. Um, and these Hornaday bullets, you look at a Hornaday bullet and it's perfectly crisp and clean. The lines are nice and clean. Everything is neat and trim. Um, they just look like a high quality bullet because they are. And they also... Um, you know, they're also called the interlock because they have a ring around the uh, center of the bullet, like a pressed-in ring um, that helps to retain the jack and the core together so they don't separate and, you know, get that explosive effect that you get when your uh, your the lead core and the copper jacket that's wrapped around it in a bullet explode because um, that can ruin a lot of meat, especially if you're in a big magnum caliber, um, you know, like a 300 you shoot a deer at 20 yards in the shoulder with a with a spire point it's going to ruin a lot of meat and uh, that's why I prefer the the higher grade premium bullets especially I mean that's usually almost all I use now but it depends you know if you're a varmint hunter or if you're somebody that just wants to go out and shoot a lot and they and you want to you know really get in tune with your gun and, and that's a really cost effective way to be able to shoot a lot is to have a bullet that is um you know cost effective to shoot but also accurate and will also kill animals just fine. Just remember, with your standard grade bullets, um, I would go up in your up in your bullet weight um, to compensate for the fact that they're not bonded, they're not you know solid copper, they're not you know the the super high premium bullets. Um, so you want to go up in your weight so that um, as that bullet sheds the velocity as it mushrooms, um, that you're going to retain enough velocity to get the penetration that you need um, to reach the vitals or you know hopefully go all the way through. Um, I I've killed tons of deer with the Hornadays. And I've never had a jacket and core separate, um, and I and I've always had good luck with them, and that's why I recommend you know that it makes the choice easy if you're just want someone someone that says hey I'll just tell me what to get because I trust you and and I'd say go and you can get loaded ammunition just buy Hornaday custom ammunition, um, you can buy it right on Midway USA or, or any place that sells ammo just with uh, regular just look for BTSP that means boat tail spire point, and uh, they load it in all different uh, calibers. And uh, or if you're a reloader, I mean, you should probably already know about it. But um, you know, that's that's my choice for a standard grade bullet, and uh, and that's kind of why I choose it. 
it's a great bullet and just remember to keep your bullet weight up with the lead core bullets and um, and you'll be fine so that's standard grade bullets and um, that's what I choose now uh, let's get into the mid-range uh, mid-class bullets which I would uh, say is your your cup and core bullets that are still you know lead core with a copper jacket um, but they're you know, you've got special stuff like you got bonded lead core and copper jackets um, like this federal fusion here um, and oh this one here this one to show you this is uh, 375 Ruger um, this is a Hornaday bullet and I don't know if this will focus on this but you can see how that bullet is nice now this is a flat point on the front pretty much um, it's not real pointed because it's a big caliber um, and uh, but you can see how uh, neat and trim that bullet is there's a couple spots on there that's just because it got wet because um, when I was uh, hunting with it um, but brand new that stuff you know wasn't on there it's very very clean very crisp um, you know you can see that there's you know not big jagged uh, edges on the uh, on the end of the lead and on the boat tail spire points like I'm talking about there it's even more clean and more crisp um, as far as you can you just look at the bullet and it looks like a quality bullet and you can tell it's well made um, it doesn't look like a shoddy uh, shoddy job but like I said disregard those spots on there that's just from uh, that's just the copper turning color for me and uh, getting a little bit of water on it but uh, so that's your that, that was just a picture there of the standard grade bullet but now the mid-grade bullets uh, like your Federal Fusions which this is a 300 WSM and this is a Federal Fusion right there Let's see if I can focus this in for you there we go Get a little bit closer maybe here for you Let's see here. And I don't know if you can see it with the lighting, but there is little lines coming up from the end of the bullet. I'm trying to see here. I kind of see one right there. From the tip of the bullet coming down just a little ways. Every so often. I know it's really hard to see, but just trust me, they're there. Um, and that's called skiving. And uh, what that is on a mid-grade bullet is that um, from the tip, their their pre-programmed places. I mean, focus this back in. This way. From the tip, their pre-programmed places that um, the bullet has already been cut, so that when it expands, it's going to expand in the same way every time, which is very important because then your bullet performance you can really tell it's going to be the same what same every time so now um, here I'll show you a close-up of kind of what I'm talking about I know it was really hard to see but uh, this is a drama you know dramatization or whatever but um, see the tip of that that I wrote down see how there's a little lines like that kind of as the bullet goes around um, it's in a circular pattern this is kind of you know it's a piece of paper so I can't really show 3d but um, it's lines that come down from the tip of the bullet just a little ways like I said that um, it's cut through the core and jacket so that when that bullet hits uh, the animal that it starts to peel back in the in the petals in the exact same places every single time which is great because it um, it means that you're gonna have the same performance time after time it's not gonna hit bone and perform one way and hit you know regular flesh and hit you know, perform a different way, that bullet's going to open in the same spot every time, and it's going to do the same thing every time, no matter what it hits, and no matter the resistance or whatever, which is great, because, you know, you want consistency, um, especially over a different, if you're going to be hunting deer and elk or whatever, um, but as far as mid-grade bullets, there are a lot of good choices out there, um, I choose these Federal Fusions for a couple reasons, for one, I, I'm a big fan of Federal Ammunition, I like that they use stick powders instead of, like, uh, Remington, with, the, with their core lock, they use this uh, ball powders, um, and Hornaday does too on some of their stuff, but uh, the Remington stuff tends to be a little bit dirty in my experience. Uh, Federal usually burns a lot cleaner uh, from what I've seen. They use uh, stick powders um, for the most part. I know they do in their premium line. I'm not sure about the Fusion for sure, but um, they also uh, seal their primers. I'll get into that later with the water sealant. But um, the, uh, the Federal Fusions, they are made a different way. The copper uh, is actually extruded around the jacket. It's and it's uh, fused 
to the the lead core, so it's bonded. So it's a bonded bullet, but it's also a lot cheaper than most of your bonded bullets. Hornaday makes bonded bullets. Every company makes bonded bullets. A lot of them have polymer tips or whatever. The uh, the Fusion does not, but um, it has the skiving, which I talked about, which I really really value as um, a great attribute in a bullet, so that it can open the same way every time and do the same thing every time. Plus, you know, you get the bonding, which means that you can go down a little bit if you want. I, I would still stick with a 180 grain and a 300, and I wouldn't go um, down to anything lower than a 165 uh, in a 30 6 anyways, because it still is a cup and core bullet. But it will retain a higher uh, amount of its uh, weight, you know, penetrating through the animal than like a standard uh, Hornaday will. And um, so you get bonding, you get uh, the skiving, and you get usually a uh, better powder in it. And uh, they're cheaper than most of your bonded bullets. Most of your bonded bullets, depending on caliber, they really range a lot. But the fusions on are just usually the, almost the same or just a little bit above what you're going to pay for, like Core Locked or Hornaday Boat Tail Spire Point, you know, custom ammunition, your standard ammunition. They're just a little bit above that. Or a lot of times they're pretty close to the same, but yet you get. Um, bonding, you get skiving, you get a boat tail on the bullet. Um, they're really, really accurate bullets in every gun that I've ever shot because of the way that they're made. They're like pressure formed around the uh, around the lead core and uh, being fused and stuff. They, I don't know, there's there must be something with the way that they make them because they've been really extremely accurate in everything that I've used them in. And uh, I've had really good luck with them as far as you know, killing deer, whatever. Go and look online. If you want uh, at, at the reviews, and, and you'll see what I'm talking about, they're a, 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 almost a premium bullet at a standard bullet price, and that's what I would choose for a mid-grade bullet. Um, another mid-grade bullet that's really great is uh, the Federal makes uh, the Trophy Bonded Bear Claw that's tipped, um, and that is a, a bonded bullet with a lead core that has the same skiving, which is really more pronounced than uh, the Fusion. I could show it to you if I had any of that ammunition, but I don't. Um, so it's pre-programmed and the jacket's pre-programmed to open the same way in the same spot every time that one actually has a polymer tip in it which is even better and it's a boat tail and it has grooves cut into the shank um, that's almost a premium bullet I mean for what for what you're getting but it all depends on what class you want to put it in I would put it in you know I guess I'd put it in the premium range but um, I'm just trying to compare it to the fusion for you it's it's a great bullet um, it's going to be a little more expensive than your Fusion. It's definitely in the mid-range to almost the premium range price, um, depending on your caliber. But so, just to reiterate, I would choose the the Hornaday Boat Tail Spire Point for my standard bullet, and the Federal Fusion um, for. And it's actually loaded by Spear, and I think they call that bullet the uh, Spear. I can't remember off the head. Maybe the Oryx or something. Um, but I, you can buy that bullet if you're a reloader, the Fusion bullet. It's just it's called a different name. Um, you have to go on on uh, Spears website, uh, or maybe call them. But I want to say, I want to say it's the Oryx, unless that's what Norma calls it. Maybe in their loaded ammunition. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I, I, it's, if I think of it, I'll let you know. But um, anyways, you, like I said, you can call Spear, and I'll tell you which bullet this is. But that's who makes this bullet, and uh, you can get it if you're a reloader. So that's another. If you want just a little bit. Um, you know, up your, you know, getting the bonded bullet and the skiving and, and the boat tail, um, and you want, you know, at a reasonable price, that's a good step up from the Horner Day, in my opinion, for not a lot more money. So that's why I give it a mid grade bullet uh, designation. But um, that's that's pretty much all for the mid grade bullets. Um, and uh, I was going to talk about maybe just a couple of the attributes. I've already kind of said most of them um, that make a good bullet. Um, one, I like a polymer tip for the most part because it initiates expansion and it cuts through the wind better. And, it re and like when you're putting your gun or putting your bullets in uh, and out of your gun, they reduce the tip deformation, which can throw off your accuracy a little bit. So they're always going to stay the same way every time. Um, I like boat tails because of what I said. Um, they cut through the wind better. They have a higher ballistic coefficient. They're going to retain more velocity and energy downrange, especially for you guys that shoot long range. I would always go with a boat tail. Um, and uh, I, you know, depending on the grade of bullet, I like a solid copper bullet, and I'll be getting to that with the premium ones. But I would like, um, you know, but it all depends on the price point or whatever. Um, but I would like, um, you know, high ballistic coefficient, which to me high is over 400. 
it's not super high, but that's kind of the, the way I would shoot for is a ballistic coefficient over 400 is usually considered pretty good as far as long range even um, goes as far as retaining its velocity and its energy. And um, let's see here. All right, let's get on to the, uh, the premium type bullets. And for me, um, I've used, uh, I'm a big fan of solid copper bullets. I've used all different kinds and from different manufacturers, including the nozzle E-tip, uh, the Barnes Triple Shock, the Tips Triple Shock, um, Hornaday makes uh, the GMX and the Monoflex for the 3030. I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, there's Remington I know makes uh, a copper solid, and there, there's a lot of people making all making uh, lead-free ammunition because a lot in California stuff they they have to. And a lot of people say, well, I don't want to have to use it if I don't have to. But me, I choose to use it because I think it is the best out of all of them and and the bullet that I choose is the Barnes triple shock and the newer version of it is the tip triple shock um, I still have this right here is the uh, 300 WSM loaded with a triple shock and this is the original triple shock um, so as you can tell I'm, I've used this you know and there's gotten snow on it and stuff um, so there's a little bit of spots but usually they're perfectly clean and uh, this is a hollow point the um, newer tip triple shocks have uh, have a polymer tip in them, but uh, this bullet is, in my opinion, the best uh, bullet ever made for hunting. The best all-around bullet you can buy. It'll do everything. They'll do everything well. Um, it's it's just a superb bullet. It's um, solid copper, as I said, and it's made out of 100% pure copper, um, which, um, like I know the Nosler E tip, the, the Hornet GMX are 95%. Uh, copper and 5% gilding metal, which uh, makes the bullet a little bit harder. Um, so they say it reduces fouling, and that may be true. I haven't really noticed any problems or whatever with my Barnes triple shocks at all um, because they also have grooves cut into the shank of the bullet. Um, and what this does is it gives the copper some place to go when, when your bullet's traveling down the barrel, when it's seated inside the rifling, and your bullet's traveling down the barrel, um, the excess copper that would normally be fouled into your barrel gets somewhere to go. It goes into those grooves, and it uh, really, I think, makes your, your barrel stay cleaner, and it's super accurate. Um, they're the most accurate bullets pretty much I've ever tested, and they're awesome for hunting. And they're, they're awesome for hunting for a couple reasons. For one, they're lead-free. I have little kids, and whether you choose to use lead ammunition or not, that's your choice. Um, you know, everyone has their own opinion on that stuff. Uh, I have, I just like the peace of mind of knowing that, you know, I shoot a deer with lead-free ammunition. I don't have to worry about any lead fragments in my meat. I know my kids aren't going to get any of that, um, no matter what. Um, if that doesn't concern you, then that's fine. Um, that's just one thing that I do because, you know, I just want to be extra careful. Um, so there's that. Um, they also hold together better than any other bullet because they're solid copper. There's no core or jacket like in a regular bullet or even a bonded bullet that could separate. It's all one piece of metal. And, you know, in the case of my, the triple shocks that I just showed you, that's a hollow point. It just has a hole drilled into it, and it has the same skiving on it like I was talking about on the, um, the Federal Fusion or the uh, Trophy Bonded Tip Bullet um, that pre-programs it to open in the exact same spot every time. Um, and you can go, and one thing with these uh, Barnes triple shocks, because they uh, retain so much, like 99% of their weight. Um, you can go way down in your bullet weight, so you can get a lot better velocity, and you can get a lot better trajectories, um, and you can get less recoil, and you can still get the penetration of a big bullet. Um, for example, in a 300 WSM, um, I'm using these up just because I have them. They're 165, but I would, I would, I would actually go with a 150 grain tip triple shock. And that penetrates like a 180 grain or even a 200 grain um, regular Hornaday boat tail spire point because the bullet does not lose any of its weight um, as it goes through the animal. And then that just, it's awesome because you can have higher velocities. I can be shooting 3,300 feet per second um, instead of 29, 2,800 with a 200 grain or 180 grain bullet. And so that means that I have a flatter trajectory. If I'm shooting at uh, running deer, my, my lead is cut considerably. Um, I have less recoil because it's a lighter bullet, uh, so it's less mass that I'm you know feeling in, in the shoulder. 
Um, it's just it's a great combination for me. Um, and you know, if you're shooting big animals like moose and elk, I would maybe go to the 165, 168 grain triple shock because those are going to penetrate like a 200. But um, so that's a big advantage to me. To me, and and it really, 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 really does its job. Well, I've killed, I count, I think 40 some animals at least with uh, triple shocks that I've killed and other people that I've uh, seen. You know, the animals shot. Way. So it just, they just, I've never seen one fail ever. Um, and another great thing about them is, you know, with a cup and core bullet, say you have a 300, even if you're shooting a 180 grain, if a deer, if you shoot a deer at 20 yards in the shoulder, um, yeah, you're going to kill the deer and it'll work just fine, but you're going to put a big hole in it. You're going to ruin a lot of meat. Those shoulders are probably going to be trashed and you're not going to be able to get any meat off them. And I like to eat every bit of the animal that I shoot. Um, and so with these triple shocks, you can shoot a deer, and I've done it. You can hit them right through the shoulders, and you will ruin a little bit of meat. But because that bullet stays together, the core and jacket don't separate because it doesn't expand nearly as much as a cup and core bullet. It doesn't mushroom into this humongous ball. It, it you know it expands like it's supposed to, like it's programmed to, but it but it doesn't over expand, um, especially in your magnum calibers. Um, like your seven millimeter mags, your three hundreds, even your thirty out sixes. You can shoot a deer at twenty feet. You know, in the woods, if you're in some thick stuff, right through the shoulders, and you can still eat those shoulders. I mean, you'll lose, you know, maybe two, three inches around the hole, and that's it. I mean, you'll be able to use everything else, which is fantastic. So it really is, to me, the best of all worlds. You get lighter recoil. You get faster, uh, you know, bullet velocities. You get better trajectory. You get better penetration. You get... Um, you know, it's lead free, which is great, uh, and it's accurate. They're the most accurate bullets I've ever tested in every gun that I've ever had, especially if you hand load. Um, they can be a little finicky as far as getting the exact load, but once you find it, boom, those, those, they shrink right down into half inch groups or less, um, for me usually. And I just, I, I, I there's other bullets out there that are great. Like I said, the trophy bonded tip, that's kind of like, uh, a, a premium bullet as well. Um, that's a good choice, but it, it does have lead in it. Um, but if uh, that doesn't bother you or whatever, that's another good choice. Um, Nosler makes the E-tip, which is a good bullet, but from my experience, they're really finicky. They shoot great in some guns and really horrible in others. And for me, the triple shocks and the tip triple shocks have shot, um, even if they shoot, don't shoot outstanding, they shoot really good in every single gun I've ever shot them up. So that's saying something. And um, I just... I just don't think there's anything better in my opinion. Now, I mean, like I said, there's tons of different bullets and they all work well. So if it's, I'm not knocking anybody else's choices. Um, I'm just saying this is what works for me and why I love it. And uh, so it really boils down to that. For me, I choose the Hornaday Bullet Hill Spire Point uh, for my regular grade. I choose the Federal Fusions for my mid grade. And I choose the Barnes Tip Triple Shocks for um, my premium bullet. And um, like I said, you have to consider the caliber and the distance and stuff that you're hunting. Um, if you're, you know, only going to be shooting, let's say, 50 yards maximum because you can't see more than that and you just sit in your stand or whatever, um, then you don't have to really worry about your bullet expanding at 400 yards like you would if you're out west. So if you're, uh, let's say, you let's say you want a 300 WSM, I would, you, you could go with a 180 grain triple shock to ruin even less meat because the velocity would be slowed down a little bit if you're not going to shoot over 50 or 60, 100 yards in the woods and you don't ever do drives, you don't ever go out west. Um, so that might be a good choice for you. Um, or you could also, if you're someone that does, you know, on the other side that hunts mostly out west in long range, I would go to a 150 for sure, even a 130 grain. So you're shooting 3,300 to 3,500 feet per second. Um, so you have a lot flatter trajectory and that bullet's going to have a lot more retained velocity downrange um, if you want to use the triple shocks. Now, shooting long range is where you might want to even go down um, to like a Federal Fusion or the Boat Tail Spire Point Hornaday because they expand better at lower velocities. Um, so when you're shooting 400 yards, you're going to get more expansion out of a boat like that than you will out of a triple shock because triple shocks um, are made to, you know, expand. In my opinion, I think you need to drive them a little bit faster than your standard bullets to get them to expand. Um, as much as some people want them to. I mean, they work just fine. But if you're going to shoot long range where you're never going to be shooting a deer closer than 300 yards, then 
Um, you can either, you know, if you want to shoot the triple shacks, go down, like I said, to a 130 or a 150, so you have that retained velocity. Or you can go even to a regular Hornaday boat tail spire point or a Fertile Fusion, um, and because they're a little bit softer and they don't retain as much of their weight as a triple shock, they're going to expand better for you at longer ranges. So you could use a 165, 180 grain um, Hornaday boat tail spire point or fusion. And if you're if you're in 30 caliber, I'm talking about all 30 caliber bullets just for simplicity. But uh, you know, the, and those will expand at four or five hundred yards for you a lot better. And so that might be a better choice for you. So it really is. Uh, you got to kind of find out, look at. You know, what, what range am I going to be shooting? Am I going to be shooting up close all the time and that's it? Or am I going to, you know, be shooting all, you know, all long range or a little bit of both? You have to look at what caliber you're using because um, if you're using a 30-30 or a 308 or 7 millimeter weight, you're not going to be shooting nearly as fast um, as a 300 Ultra Mag. So you have to look at, um, okay, if I'm shooting a 300 Ultra Mag, then I don't have to go down in bullet weight to get the velocity as much if I'm using a triple shot. Or let's say if you're shooting a 300 Ultra Mag, um, I don't want to ruin a lot of meat, but I don't want to use the triple shots because to me they're too expensive. I'm a, relo I'm a reloader, so I want to use a cheaper bullet like a Hornaday Boat Tail Spire Point. That's great. I would use like a 200 then, so you're not going to be ruining all this meat. And uh, you're, you're shooting a Magnum Caliber that's a lot faster. So that way you would... Um, you know, still get the attributes that you want. So it's really is you have to match the the gun, you know, the caliber to the range and the game that you're hunting. And if you ever have any questions with that, I uh, I could help you out. Just put it in the comments below, and uh, I could you know recommend something that'll work just fine for you. You tell me what price range or what type of bullet you want to use, and uh, what gun you have, and uh, what animal you're hunting. And I could you know tell you you know if you don't feel comfortable figuring it out, or if you just want some advice on it, I could uh, I could help you out with that. So, um, hopefully I covered most of the stuff that you guys uh, were kind of thinking about and uh, just some choices here. And then I have a little bit of a side note. Um, I was talking about how I love the lead-free ammunition. And this is a 30-30 round in the Hornaday. Uh, here it is right here, this box. 140 grain monoflex. Um, this is under like a special considerations. Um, I have a lever action 3030 that I've had since I was 12, and I really love the gun. I use it on drives. I actually did a review on it on here. Um, and, uh, you know, 3030 isn't a super fast gun and stuff, but uh, I've been, you know, searching for a good a good bullet. And uh, even a 3030, even though it's not fast, you shoot them with a regular bullet in the shoulders, and you'll ruin a lot of meat um, up close and stuff. And so I've been looking for the same type of bullet, like a triple shock, which they do make for the 3030. Um, but... Uh, because it's a tube fed lever action, you know, they have to make them in flat points and stuff. And Hornaday came up with this, which is, um, it has the flex tip, which is a uh, flexible polymer tip. So you have a lot better ballistic coefficient and you have uh, a pointed bullet instead of a big flat point. So it really retains the velocity a lot better. And it's uh, only a 140 grain, but it's solid copper. So it penetrates like a 180 grain. And uh, so you get less recoil, you get a higher velocity. Um, what do they list the velocity at on this? 2,465 feet per second, which is pretty fast out of a 3030, considering what uh, normal loads are. And uh, But you get lighter recoil, great penetration. I killed the deer with it this year. It did fantastic. Um, I've used the 160 grain uh, lever evolution ammunition, um, which is the same type of thing, only it's a 160 grain um flex tip bullet and it's a regular lead core with a copper jacket on it um cup and core bullet they work just fine um they're you know if you're someone that doesn't care about lead free ammunition that's what i would choose the 160 grain um if you only want to use the lead you know cup and core bullet because they're probably a little cheaper but for me it's the 140 grain monoflex all the way um you get lead free polymer tip um it works in tube fed uh actions it less recoil higher velocity um, it just for all the reasons I love the triple shock pretty much is the same uh, with the monoflex um, just does a fantastic job and uh, you know it's just a special consideration because in the 3030 most people have to use a flat point bullet and most people use traditionally uh, like a 170 or something you know for you know close encounters and stuff but this is a great all-around option especially if you put a scope on your 3030 um, it'll really extend your range out farther um, it's going to penetrate really well for you and um, I just had fantastic luck with it, and it's my favorite load. 
uh, of all time for the 3030 is the Hornaday Lever Evolution loaded with the 140 grain monoflex. So uh, I just wanted to share that with you. Another uh, special consideration here um, I talked a little bit about before is uh, primer sealing. And what that is, is if you can see here, see if I can focus this in a little bit better for you. If it's hard to see or not, on this one it's a little hard to see. Got this one here, see if it's a little bit more pronounced. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, you can see a little bit. See that little blue right there around the primer and that area right there? That's called primer sealer. And what that is, is it seals your primers against water. And uh, it's just a, it's like almost like nail polish, where they put it around the primer so that water can't get in there and uh, create a dud. And especially for you guys that live in like Alaska or something, um, Federal is the only one that I know of that does this. Um, the Federal Fusions have it, and the Federal Premium all have this, um, where they, they seal the primer. Um, so if you hunt in really wet conditions where your ammunition is getting wet, um, you know, not by choice or whatever, but uh, just yet another thing to consider. Um, that's another reason why I love federal ammunition is because they seal their primers against uh, against moisture. Um, just yet another touch of why I said like I love them. And uh, I'm trying to think here. Uh, da, 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 da. Talked about that. Okay. Um, I think I touched on that too about the powder types. Um, a lot of uh, your, your low grade ammunition is used with ball powder, which is a spherical powder um, used in big lots because they make a lot of it because that's, you know, a lot of people buy this the cheapest stuff. Um, and it works, but it's a little bit dirtier and it's not as temperature tolerant, which means um, it, in the extreme hot or cold, um, it can vary the velocity um, and uh, act a little bit different. Whereas, like, the Federal Premium I know is loaded with a, like a, a stick powder. Which is like just like looks little cylinders um, instead of a spherical powder, which burns a little bit cleaner in my opinion, and it's uh, less temperature sensitive in my opinion. Um, so that's just another reason why I love Federal Premium ammunition. Um, the Fusion, I'm not sure if it's loaded with stick powder. It might be spherical, but I know Federal Premium is loaded with with uh, extruded stick powder. Um, let's see here. That's pretty much it, I think. Um, I don't know if I forgot anything, but uh, if I did, maybe I'll have to come back and put it in the comments or something. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this look at bullets and rifle bullets and ammunition, kind of like a little bit of a thing on there. And uh, as far as what, you know, different grades of ammunition or bullets are um, and why I, you know, I give them that designation of regular, mid-range, and then, you know, the high grade, the premium stuff, um, and why I choose what I choose and why. Um, I like each one, and you know, if you ever have any questions, um, like I said, I narrowed it down. If you want me to boil it down to three things for a 3030, I recommend um, the 140 grain monoflex from Hornaday in the lever uh, evolution ammunition. Uh, it's lead free if you want, if you don't care about that. And uh, uh, the only other option I would choose is the lever evolution from Hornaday in the 160 grain monoflex. So if you have a 3030, those are great choices for you. Um, and if you uh, are looking for a standard bullet, I would go with a Hornaday Boat Tail Spire Point. Um, load it, and Hornaday loads it in their regular ammunition. You can get that at Midway or anywhere else that sells ammunition. Um, you want your mid-grades, I would choose the Federal Fusions. Those are, again, available at, you know, Midway, Fleet Farm, any of your normal places that sell ammo should have Federal Fusion. Um, your Federal Premiums, sometimes places don't carry them, so you might have to get them online. Um, but I would go with the, the Barnes Tipped Triple Shocks. And, uh, like I said, Depending on your caliber or whatever, the bullet weight's going to, you know, if you have a really uh, big caliber, like a Magnum 300 or something, I would go down in your bullet weight. I'd go, like, to a 150, unless you're going to be, you know, hunting big animals like elk, moose, you know, brown bears. Then I would stick with, you know, your 165, your 180s. But if you're only hunting, like, most of your smaller deer species, I would stick with your 150s or even 130s. Um, but if you're shooting, like, a 308 or 7 millimeter weight, I would, you, you can even go down farther, especially for deer. Um... And so uh, that's one reason that I love them. But uh, any questions or comments, uh, be respectful of everyone else. And like I said, these are just my choices. If I didn't go over any bullets that you use that you love or whatever, it's not a knock on anything that anyone else uses. Um, I'm just uh, saying what I've used, and I've killed tons of animals with every single kind of these bullets, and I've had really good luck with them all. 
and uh, it just depends on the caliber and, and the range and the game you're hunting and stuff. So hope you enjoyed this, and uh, any questions, uh, I'll try to get back to you. Thanks.